Hi, good morning, good afternoon, yes, good evening, depending on the time where we are connecting with me live this beautiful Monday morning. I have a very, very important message for um, engineers, project managers, and if you know that you are a family member helping your brother, your sister, your father, or your mother who is in diaspora to build their house in Nigeria, Please, this piece of information is for you. If you're an engineer, a project manager, or you're helping your brother or your sister to supervise a project in Nigeria, then this piece is for you. But before I go deep into the message I have for you, I want to appreciate those who take time to follow us on our YouTube channel. Thank you so very much. For those who subscribe to our channel, thank you, thank you. We're growing on a daily basis. Thank you so very much for the, our extreme clients that reach out to us, that trust what we're doing. Thank you so very much. I'm doing this piece this morning because I had an experience last week that actually took me so far in thought. And after... Uh, it took time to also speak with the client. Then it dawned on me that I have to release this piece. Why? It was because I experienced my client cry. Uh, it was not a baby tears, to be very honest. I couldn't take it. My heart bled. My heart bled. What actually happened? Before now, I have taken my time to advise clients that if you want to get your job done, ensure that you look for competent and that can help you execute your project. But many times, I've seen clients still keep deaf ears to this advice, and most of the time, I see them give their job to people who are not professional on the job. There's one thing I want you to understand about executing building projects. It's not about the ability of being available. It also requires your what? Technicality. So um, the client reached out to us and said, Victor, I want to roof my house outside a state. We went there, we saw, and then we gave quotation. It was time to buy the materials. And whenever I notice that the client wants to buy the material, I let it go the way. And so she told me that, oh, my younger brothers around, they would buy it. I have one man that supplied wood. I said, okay, fine. Since you trust that plug, no problem. Just let us know when you are ready to execute the job. On that faithful day, she reached out to me and said, okay, fine. I've sent the money to my younger brothers who are twin in Nigeria. They will show so they could go buy the wood. We left at those states because I called the boy in the morning. Oh, I was getting the wood. He said, okay, fine. He's going to the summit to get the wood. Okay, no problem. Waited all through that day. The wood did not come. All right, let's see how it goes. Then the following day, when are you bringing the wood? Then the wood is coming today. We waited and waited and waited and called and called, and he wasn't picking the call. So many storylines along this process. At the end of the day, the third day, in the early hours of the morning, the wood arrived on site. On seeing the wood, <laughs> I shook my head. And I said to myself, this wood does not meet the integrity of what I promote as a standard. Please, if you are an engineer, a project manager, or a supervisor, family member, supervising anybody's project, even if they're in Nigeria on, and they're not on site, or they're in diaspora, please manage their money effectively. Please do the right thing on the job. And I told the client, I can't do this. I had promoted standard as a job. I cannot, I cannot do all of all this. And she said, can I see the wood? 
and I gave her access to sing the wood. And by herself, she said, no, Victor, they cannot use this wood to even roof a restaurant where they want to sell mama put food. And then she burst into tears that my brothers did this to me. I've spent over two million naira buying this wood and this is all that they could bring to the site. Immediately I told my team, we have to leave Ugeli. That was the state. We can't do this job. We have to leave. And so we left and got back to Benin and so many calls came in. Please, can you help us manage this? And I said to her, it is not that this wood cannot be used, but I need you to consent to it that you are aware that these are the woods that was brought to sight. So whatever the effect becomes, know that my hands are clean and it is not my fault. And we reached the concluding agreement and I said, okay, fine. So the wood doesn't get bad or get stolen. Let's immobilize our guys back to site to execute the job. But the touching line here is listening to the woman cry. She said a whole lot. I want to sell that house. I don't want to build it again. They should all go. I want to stay away from my family. I, I was listening to her. I, I never knew how to pet her. At some point, I burst into tears. And I said to myself, how can people be this wicked? Someone who lives overseas, you don't know what she do for a living. You don't know how she gets her money. She walks all through the clock. And has been able to bring out this money. You that happens to be a family member, a brother. And all you could do is to squander the money. I've been begging you people. And I will say it again without fear or favor. If you know your brother, your sister, your mother, your father is not a professional. Don't give him or her money. Oh. I am telling you. I am telling you. It is their sister's money to them. Now my sister money more chopper. And to be very honest, they've eaten it and everyone did not fall. Everyone did not fall. If you're an engineer or a project manager, a family member helping your brother, sister, father, mother to undo a building project in Nigeria, please do the right thing. Please do the right thing. I know that there are countless numbers of people who are suffering from what I am sharing right now. Many of you, you don't, you don't just cry out, but you know the truth deep down in your heart. Your building project is not a charity project. Your building project should have nothing to do with your family run around. Get trusted hands. Bring them on board. Design your project schedule. Allow them to execute your project for you so you have peace of mind. If I am privileged to bring this client, I'm sharing her experience. If I'm privileged to bring her on air and she share how she feels right now, I know so many of you may be discouraged to continue your project. Please do the right thing. For me, I will blame her. Do you know why? This is why I want to blame her. For giving those boys that amount of money. You know it. They are not working. You, you know it. And at the end of the day, you give them that amount of money. What do you want them to do? You may say, why would I blame her? You should know. If you don't know them, it's your fault. To be honest, Victor, can't I trust my family member? It's your fault. I'm not saying you shouldn't trust them. But I'm saying that there are people who you should know over time and entrust certain things with. You don't just entrust things with people all of a sudden. I've shared my piece this morning and I know that whoever wants to learn would actually actually learn. Thank you so very much for following us on our piece. Thank you. God bless you. My name is Sir Victor.
Olise. And if you are yet to subscribe to our YouTube channel, please kindly hit the subscribe button right about now to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget that my goal for 2023 is to help you achieve three things. The first is to help 500 people in 2023 to buy piece of land in Nigeria. And I'm doing this by connecting with reputable real estate industries in Nigeria. The second goal is to help 50 people manage their building project in 2023. And the third goal is to help 150 people buy houses in Nigeria in the year 2023. You can reach us on 70 63 I roll over again, 70 My name is Victor Olise.